Do, gumalaw na kayo, gumalaw na. Galaw na, galaw na. Ah, nagsabi lang, 500 gin. Hindi, ano lang. lang nakikita mo yun. Kasi, kasi. Yes, of course. Uh, roll lang tayo. Yun. Ah. Roll lang. O, oh, all units, galaw na, galaw na. Papasok na tayo. This is the center of hope. At any given time, there are a dozen to two dozen girls living here. Most of them are victims of abuse. This is where we met 15-year-old Sarah and 14-year-old Joanne. We're not revealing their real names and faces, but their stories are very real. Nakakadiri po, pero ano, wala, wala kaming magawa kasi ano, may, meron naman yung kapalit. Just like those rescued in a number of sting operations by the Philippine government in 2014, they were minors, in fact, just kids, when they came here. Nine years old po ako nung nangyari. Parang wala lang, kasi bata pa naman po ako nung hindi ko po alam na mali. They were also victims of illegal cybersex operations. Welcome to the special edition of Assignment Asia. I'm Barnaby Lowe. 750,000. That's the estimated number of people looking to engage in sexual activities with children at any given time online. Make no mistake about it. Webcam child sex tourism or child cyber sex is a global phenomenon. And the center of operations is here in the Philippines, where tens of thousands of children are believed to be victims. Cebu, Queen City of the South, is widely considered to be second to Manila. It is both a commercial hub and a tourist destination. It also has a bustling nightlife. It isn't difficult to see why so many foreigners come here to have a good time. But in recent years, the city appears to be attracting more and more virtual tourists. And as the internet has become more accessible, so has the opportunity for online child sexual exploitation. According to Preda, a local NGO that protects women and children, about one quarter of children they've rescued have been victims of cyber sex. Sarah and Joanne were neighbors in one of Cebu's most densely populated and impoverished communities. Sarah and Joanne were playing on the street in a neighborhood like this when one day they were asked if they wanted to make some money. They ended up in a place like this. All over the community, people can rent computers and go online for less than one U.S. cent a minute. Some of these shops front the main street, while others are hidden from plain sight in dark, narrow alleys all around town. Most activities are relatively harmless gaming, social media, email. But when Sarah and Joanne went inside one of these shops that day in 2009, they had no idea that their lives were going to change forever. Nung pagpasok ko po doon, meron, meron na pong dalawang babae doon na nakaano nga po, walang suot. Tapos, na, nagulat po ako, tapos 
nahihiya po ako. Kahit nahihiya ka, tinuloy mo? Nung madalas na po, hindi na po ako nahihiya kasi parang wala lang. Kasi bata pa naman po ako nun. Hindi ko po alam na mali. Okay. Pakikwento mo kung okay lang sa'yo kung ano yung eksaktong pinapagawa sa inyo dun sa computer shop na yun. Yun po, pinapatanggal po kami ng lahat ng suit namin. Tapos, pi, pinapa, ano po kami, pinapasayaw-sayaw, ganyan. Tapos, ano pa po, may iba po. What those po other things were, Joanne couldn't bring herself to tell us. But Sarah told us some of their clients had perversions that were a little too extreme. Marami pa, bukod sa pag-uhubad, ano pa ang gusto ng mga foreigner? Sabi, sabi niya, ano daw, mag-ano daw kami ng ano, ng aso, magpapasok daw kami doon. Tapos, ano, kinuha niya yung aso, tapos, ano, yun, pinapagawa siya. Nakawakawakan daw namin. Ginawa niyo? Ginawa namin. Pero, ano yung naramdaman ninyo o sa loob-loob ninyo? Ano yung nasa isip ninyo? Nakakadiri po. Pero ano, wala, wala kaming magawa kasi ano, may, meron naman yung kapalit eh, kaya ano, parang okay lang, ganun. For every four to six hours of work, they were paid four to six US dollars. Money they believed their families needed badly. Sarah's father is a pedicab driver mother, a domestic helper. Together, they make less than 10 US dollars a day for a family of 11. Joanne comes from a broken family. She never met her father, and her mother left her with her grandfather when Joanne was just one to work in Manila. Later, she came back to Cebu, still poor. Around the time, Joanne was recruited to the online sex trade. When we met Joanne's mother, she admitted to knowing that her daughter was working for a cyber sex den operator. Kilala niyo ho tong taong to? Oh, kapit ba? Ah, uh, ano ho yung pagkakakilala niyo sa taong to? Eh, yun nga ganyan, paano siya gumagamit siya ng mga bata. Pero hinayaan niyo ho yung anak ninyo na sumama sa kanya. Ganun po ba? Tama ba? Yung... Hindi, kasi iba kasi yung pinakas pinapagsabi niya sa akin, hihiramin lang daw niya dahil ipapakita yung mukha. Tapos, pumayag ako. Umagang umaga yun eh. Pumayag ako. Tapos nung pagkatapos na nila doon, tinanong ko yung anak ko. Sabi niya, ganyan daw, pinahubad sila, lahat. Sarah, on the other hand, says she isn't sure if her parents knew at the time. But she did see them talking to the dance operator. Siguro iba yung, iba yung sinabi niya. Kaya parang napakonvinsin niya yung ano. Yung magulang ko na ganito, baka iniba niya yung story kaya hindi ko alam. Ko answer, tinood yun ni eh. at yung last yun nga hapit na sila ma ma-raid gani. Pero atong higa yun na wala, wala mi ana. Pero katong last yun nga kuan, nakadawat mi kuan, kwarta, pero 100. Last ba? Nya, mao na to among hibawan nga anong doon na sila kwarta? Sa tagal-tagal nga pabalik-balik si Sarah dun sa internet shop na yon, isang daan lang yung naibigay niya sa inyo. Dili, murag kaduha, katulo. Okay, so kung nakatanggap kayo ng tig isang daan, sabi niyo tatlong beses? Oh, tatlong. Pero, ah sir ha? Hindi, oo. Oh. Oh. Ano no? Ayun ko, nangutan na ko. Ayun ko, diin mo ane. Siya. Ay, sa kuan raman ni ma, ka nang sa computer niya. Ko, anong tagaan man mo niya? Nga, ka nang, kuan man siya. Ay, igo raman mi sayaw-sayaw. Sayaw-sayaw, ako nung sila sir ba? Pero wala ko kay Bao sir nga magubuan ba di niya ang bata. Ang, ang akong kuan siya, niya, murag baliwa lang bitaw na ako. Oh my, noon kay tagaan mo. 100 niya. Tapos kaunan rin na sa mga bata ini kagabi eh. Ila na nang kaunon, mga sila duha, tulo, mga bata, ano, mga gawas. Tapos mga on ang diha, huwag ka nang lakimi ba. Malipay na sila. Nagaan sila 100 kayo. Nagsayaw-sayaw raw kuno sila sa kompyuteran. So just how common is it for parents to know that their children are in fact being victimized? 
When we come back, we'll take you to a sleepy town not far from Cebu City, where authorities had made a shocking discovery. Children were being trafficked in their own homes. Stay with us on Assignment Asia. Meet China's decision makers and thought leaders. See them in action, hear their views, debate their policies. Meet China's leaders with me. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn. Hello, I'm Arnand Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. The Heat. Well, joining us now from Baghdad, the international talk show from CCTV America. In-depth debate. We were left with no choice but to activate the, the military. Israel wants to divide and conquer. Strong opinion. I won't answer that ridiculous question. <laughs> Critical stories. It's been described as a war zone. The Ebola virus is spreading at an alarming rate. Major issues. But now they've got a chance to feel part of Scotland, an independent Scotland. Presidents. China's uh, rise in the future is inevitable. Advocates. I think it's a very, very regressive state for women. Newsmakers. The ride itself is immensely physical. And a challenging host. OK, so let me remind you again that they call Native Americans, not Red Indians. The Heat, the political talk show that covers the world. CCTV America, taking you further. In March 2013, a British man found to have engaged in sexual activities with children online here in the Philippines was convicted and sentenced to eight years in prison. The man had apparently recorded those activities and kept them on his computer. The next logical step for authorities was to locate the children. The hunt took them to a small town in the central Philippines. This is the village of Ibabao in Cordova, a town not far from Cebu City. Residents here aren't particularly well off. Most of them rely on fishing to make a living. But in 2008, local officials noticed something strange. Suddenly, it seemed, antennas started popping up on rooftops all over the village. Police were puzzled. Later, they found out the antennas were connecting the homes to the internet, something they couldn't possibly afford. That was very doubtful to you, that there were so many antennas yes, um, jutting out of those houses. Yes, so we passed an ordinance uh, providing for requirements on my business with antennas. We also conducted an information drive um, telling the people that uh, we are asking them to register uh, their antennas so that we can monitor their movement, what, what, are the, the, what were the activities at the time. The local government wanted residents to know they now had eyes on the ground. Reports of children taking their clothes off in front of webcams started coming in. But then the antennas began to disappear as people started to use Wi-Fi modems instead. Still, reports of child pornography persisted. But without hard evidence, the authorities couldn't search the houses. I was going to ask, you, could, you couldn't secure a search warrant? Uh, very hard. No judge would release a search warrant uh, without uh, a, a strong basis. Mm -hmm. So until that time when uh, a volunteer came to us and they divulged the information, so because of her story, we were able to coordinate with the NBI and also uh, internationally. Then the informant came to authorities with video footage, enough for a judge to issue a search warrant. What they found in Ibabo, though, was unlike anything they'd seen. Children weren't rounded up in a den to perform sexual acts online. Instead, they were victims in their own homes, their parents watching them as they took their clothes off and did whatever clients on the other side of the world wanted them to do in front of a webcam. In Ibabao, it had become a cottage industry. Unbelievable. 
that uh, the parents would uh, allow their children to, uh, do the acts that they were dictating. Can, can you describe to us what you saw in the video? Of course, the, uh, going naked before the camera and then the touching of the private parts, like that. Unbelievable. Cecilia Oibanda, founder of Cyan Forum Foundation, has helped victims of abuse for more than 20 years, including victims of cyber sex. She's alarmed at how the trade has evolved and continues to evolve. I think in, in part of the parents, um, beyond money, um, I think there's also some cultural you know, notion there that um, child abuse is, uh, is possible without really consuming it physically, you know. Since there is no actual contact, they believe that there's no harm caused to the child. And that, that one is really not true. And, and I think that we need to, we need the community, we need the parents, we need the people to understand that it is not a trade that we need to, you know, to justify. In every picture, in every, in every show, there's a real victim there, there's a real exploitation there. To this day, however, despite their community having already become the poster child for child cyber sex, the issue remains hush-hush among residents of Ibabao. Long time ago, no po. Two years. Long. Two years ago, hindi po ba last year yon? Two years. No, no. Don't, don't. Wala na po ngayon. I don't like that. Wala na po ngayon. Wala na po. Wala na po ng yaring karon dito ngayon. Bakit? You always looking around me. So how do you feel when people say Cordova has become the center of child cyber sex? in the world. That is inaccurate because a center in the sense that we make a way effect arrest. Mm. Uh, but the other areas where there is no arrest, uh, it doesn't mean that there, there is no such activity. One of the things the local government here in Cordova has done since the discovery of cyber sex activities is to require those sending and receiving money through establishments like the one behind me to fill out this form. Now, one of the most crucial information in this form is the relationship between the sender and receiver. Local officials believe that through this information, they can trace dubious transactions. Mayor Sitoy admits this is far from a foolproof solution and that the problem does still exist in Cordova, though it's not as rampant. The trouble is, perpetrators are becoming more elusive. The existence of the problem here uh, becomes complicated because of uh, the come and go uh, procedure that they have adopted. They recruit when the situation is uh, safe for them, but uh, they immediately leave when uh, they suspect that there is follow-up made on their activity. I don't think that one NGO or two NGOs or even one government can really tackle this problem alone. It really requires a, a, you global, know, effort. a global effort, you know, and sharing of information. And, the, and I think this is the direction that we are looking at because, like, yeah, we have maybe able to track some, some operators here in the Philippines, but we can do it here in the Philippines, but definitely they have their own connection abroad. To that end, a Dutch child rights organization has created a decoy to snare cyber sex perpetrators. When we come back, how that Dutch group's efforts successfully led to identifying more than 1,000 online pedophiles. You're watching Assignment Asia. From emerging powers to expanding partnerships, from fighting poverty to combating climate change, booming economies, war-ravaged nations, and everything in between. 
we capture the changes affecting the most dynamic and diverse continent on the planet, taking you beyond the headlines to the people and their stories. Asia Today, delivering Asia to the world. In recent years, Philippine authorities have had some success uncovering illegal cybersex operations, including those that use minors. But their work is far from over and is only half the solution to the global child cybersex phenomenon. Because as long as there is demand, there will be supply. And tracking down the demand side of the business has proven to be more challenging because the internet has given millions of pedophiles, to a certain extent, protection and anonymity. To date, only a handful of online pedophiles worldwide have been convicted, according to the Dutch child rights organization Terrorism. And so the only way to catch them, the organization says, is to engage them. My name is Sweetie. I'm 10 years old. I live in the Philippines. Every day, I have to sit in front of the webcam and talk to men, just like tens of thousands of other kids. For 10 weeks, Teradazon researchers chatted with men online, posing as young Filipino girls. One of them was Sweetie. We went online as uh, posing as a, a young Filipina, and um, we were completely shocked by the amount of people who wanted to get in a conversation with her, even though they knew that this was a young child, because it was clear from her, uh, from her profile. And uh, the, the way these men would start the conversation was almost always immediately in a sexual way. Sweetie isn't even real. She's a virtual character, a digital creation who looks and moves like a real girl. The men who chat with her think she's from the Philippines, but whatever she says and does are actually controlled by programmers and researchers from a warehouse in Amsterdam. Using bits of information they give us, we identify them with Google, Facebook and other sources. Without hacking their computers, we collect their names, addresses, phone numbers, pictures and video footage. In just two months, we identified the first 1,000 predators. So how much has Sweeney contributed to the solution to this problem? Well, I think the first step is that we've really put this phenomenon on the map internationally. So it's really, uh, now it is clear to the world that this is a big problem that we need to address. There have been also already several arrests of the 1,000 identities that we provided to Interpol. So that's also a good sign. And now for us, the next step is that we hope to persuade uh, international community and international law enforcement to adopt this new uh, proactive way of investigating. 
This is exactly why Sarah and Joanne are telling their stories, they say, to bring awareness and prevent other children from becoming victims. Yes, they were victims, but through the help of the government and their mentors here in the Center of Hope, they say they've learned to move on. Kasi sinabi nga po sa Bible, all things work together for good. Kaya kung hindi po yung nangyari, hindi po ako mapupunta dito. Kung hindi po ako napunta dito, hindi ko po malalaman ang karapatan ko. Hindi ko po malalaman na yung mga mali na nangyayari sa, sa Pilipinas na may mga ganun pala. At isa kami sa nabiktima. Um, makasabi ko sa kanya, okay lang yan, ma uh, makano, maka makaka-recover din sila as, ano, huwag silang mawala ng pag-asa kasi, kasi buhay ka pa eh. Ano, sabi nga nila eh, kapag habang buhay ka, may pag-asa, di ba? For five years now, the Center of Hope has been their home. Here, they're encouraged to express themselves through arts. They have group sharing sessions and are closely monitored by social workers and psychologists. They're able to go to school and their needs are adequately provided. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where they're staying? Yeah, this is the, what they this stay. This it's, is it's the dormitory. Nice. Yeah, it is, it is very it's nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because you know, we feel sometimes that these kids was giving to us by God to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So if you take care a child and it comes to your home, you should give everything that you can. You know, as a as a caretaker, <laughs> of you know, as 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 um, maybe a temporary guidance, uh, gui guardians. And to this part person. part of taking care of these kids is actually following up on their cases. Oh, definitely, that's part of the taking care, <laughs> part of you know of the design forum because we need really to to track and understand what really happens to them and seek justice. You know, we cannot just allow, just to help them and just um, allow the trafficker to free, to recruit again, you know, and to, you know, to victimize again more girls. So we need to stop him by, by putting him in prison. And in the case of Sarah and Joanne, to make sure also that their parents take responsibility. Despite all the years they've spent here and the lessons they've learned, social workers here say it isn't time yet for them to go home. From time to time though, do let them see their families. And despite all the pain, the time and distance apart, moments like these are cherished. It's not important if you have your experience. Because it's more important if you have your experience. Doon sa nangyari sa iyo. Ano, kamove na ako doon. Pero ano, ang gusto ko lang sana yung yung ano, yung ginawa namin sana malaman ng iba para maging aware sila na merong ganitong nangyayari sa bansa natin. Kaya sana mag-ingat sila. Just because we don't see it happening around us doesn't mean it's not happening. The danger with child cybersex is that it happens behind closed doors, and the abusers are spread across the entire planet. But it isn't impossible to stop. With law enforcement, children's advocates, and local communities working together, the day could come when no child will ever have to lose her innocence and dignity, online or offline. That's all for this edition of Assignment Asia. You can watch this and all our stories on our website www.assignment-asia.com You can also share your thoughts, contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media. I'm Barnabilo, thanks for watching and join us again on Assignment Asia.